On the last edition of The Best Movie You Never Saw, we took a look at Peter Himes' 2010, his sequel to 2001 A Space Odyssey, and were impressed by how many people seemed to really enjoy the movie and remembered it well. It got me to thinking, Peter Himes really is an underrated journeyman director, and a lot of his movies have kind of been featured in this column before, including Running Scared, and I was trying to think of other movies of his that I really like that don't really get their due. One that I've always enjoyed is Capricorn 1 from 1978, which is kind of a conspiracy theory movie about astronauts. But another one that is shamefully underrated is Outland from 1981, starring Sean Connery as a marshal on Jupiter's moon. So it's this week's best movie you never saw. Think it over. Let me tell you what you're dealing with here. I run a franchise. The company hires me to dig as much ore as possible out of this hellhole. My hookers are clean, some of them are good looking. My booze is in water, the workers are happy. When they dig more ore, the company's happy. When the company's happy, I'm happy. On Io, Jupiter's moon, miners have begun randomly committing suicide in gruesome ways. This is chalked up to their grueling working conditions, but the outpost's new marshal, William O'Neill, becomes convinced that something else is afoot. Soon he discovers the deadly truth, that the miners are being given stimulants with the nasty side effect that causes psychosis. His pursuit of the truth lands him on the hit list of the outpost's general director, Shepard, who hires professional hitmen to deal with the pesky marshal. Knowing that skilled gunmen are on their way, and without anyone to turn to, O'Neill waits to face the men alone. So basically, this movie is a science fiction version of High Noon and it stars Sean Connery in the role that Gary Cooper played as the lone marshal facing off against deadly adversaries. You do have a flair for the dramatic. Peter Boyle co-stars as the outpost general director, Shepard, who's kind of this white-collar criminal. He's an asshole. He's a very powerful asshole. Don't mess with him. And then there's Francis Sternhagen as the outpost doctor, who seems to be the only ally that Connery has. Bingo. It has an amazing musical score by Jerry Goldsmith, and it's a pretty cool little movie. So, in the early 1980s, nobody was really doing westerns anymore, and Peter Himes, according to Empire Magazine, really had his heart set on the genre. But he decided that all he would have to do was basically to make the movie about the next frontier, which is, of course, space. So he ended up making kind of a space western, and he managed to get Sean Connery to sign on to it. Now. Outland did indeed come along at kind of a rough time in Sean Connery's career. After leaving the James Bond series with Diamonds Are Forever in 1971, Connery had managed a slew of kind of respectable hits, including Sidney Lumet's The Anderson Tapes, John Huston's The Man Who Would Be King, and another really underrated movie, The Wind and the Lion. However, there were also more than a few really pricey flops like Richard Lester's Cuba, which was a box office disaster just a couple of years before Outland. And even good movies like The Great Train Robbery, which was actually directed by Michael Crichton, the author, really kind of underperformed at the box office. Thus, he decided to experiment with a genre that had eluded him up to this point, sci-fi. I just hope that I can justify your confidence. You see, science fiction was all the rage in the late 70s and early 80s, thanks to Star Wars. But it was the film Alien that perhaps had the biggest impact on Outland, with Peter Himes writing and directing which could have almost been set in the same universe, with heartless company CEOs put upon blue collar workers in space and our general lived in aesthetic. Cut the garbage and get back to work. However, of course, the movie that played an even bigger role in Outland's trip to the big screen was High Noon, with the last act of the film virtually making it a remake, albeit a sci-fi tinged one. What are you at? You. And the result was a cool flick that really should have caught on at the box office, but only managed to gross about $17 million, which is not a disaster for 1981, but also was far from making it a hit. That's a lot of crap. So here's something interesting. Back when I was in high school, I actually wrote, directed, and starred in a remake of Outland. Let me explain. For my French class, 
we were asked to do short movies with camcorders. This was 1999, by the way. And having recently seen it as a midnight movie on the Canadian Space Channel, I decided to adjust Outland to a high school setting. Basically, instead of minors getting drugs to overperform, students were getting them. Most importantly, it allowed me to be Sean Connery, a childhood hero of mine. Plus, the year was 1999, so no one would have known that I actually stole the story from a 1981 movie that, of course, stole the story from High Noon. And what's even more interesting is that later on that summer, a movie came out called Disturbing Behavior, which basically was the same story that I had done. I just had no idea. One A plus and 20 years later, I still have a soft spot for Peter Himes' entertaining outland. It's always been a tad obscure, having come along just a few years before Sean Connery hit his stride as a middle-aged superstar. Back then, he was kind of in limbo, with the public still strongly associating him with James Bond, something he was only ever really able to shake off after winning an Oscar for The Untouchables. It took him kind of ditching the hairpiece and embracing middle age that really made him catch on. He's perfectly cast here, though, as the Gary Cooper-style space marshal. He has a great director in Peter Himes, who is just coming off the underrated Capricorn 1, and will go on to do, of course, 2010, just a few years later. This is one of two movies he made with Connery, and he always managed to get the star's vulnerable side out between this and The Presidio, which I think are the only two movies I've ever seen in which Sean Connery actually cries. You know, the hookers here are nice. Sometimes they can help you when you're lonely. Now, Peter Himes gave a great interview to a website that I really like called Money Into Light, which is by this author named Paul Rowlands, who always interviews kind of these old timers and gets really interesting quotes out of them. And what Peter Himes said to him about Sean Connery was kind of cool. He said basically that Connery was a top professional and that the only way you could ever get in trouble with Sean is if you're not honest. If you're straight and if he asks you a question and you go, I don't know or I don't agree, you're okay, but you can't bullshit him. You're making one of the biggest mistakes you'll ever make in your life if you try that. And my process with Sean was having to prove myself and get his confidence as a filmmaker. It took a while. He used to say hello boy when we first started. Then our relationship changed and would be hello cock. I love him. So, Sean Connery of course is perfect as the square jawed straight shooting cowboy archetype. However, Himes gives him some much needed shading, such as the fact that his stubbornness has all but ruined his career. You got a big mouth. That's why you send from one toilet to the next. Landing him on the inhospitable rock Io, which is bad enough that his wife abandons him in the first act, taking their son with them. It gives him pathos. All these miners are making these huge salaries because they're doing such hazardous work, he's not even getting the special pay. But the problem with Outland is the same problem that High Noon had. Never for a second do you believe that Peter Boyle's hired thugs are any threat to Sean Connery. What is it with guys like you? I mean, if you were such a goddamn super cop, what are you doing on a company mining operation like Isle? Who's maybe the toughest action star of all time. Heck, by the time they show up, at Connery's already been through the ringer and there's no doubt that he's gonna dispatch all of the goons with relative ease. And indeed, he pretty much kills all three of them without a problem. The only one that gives him any kind of fight, really, is the surprise villain at the end that shouldn't surprise anyone, who's actually played by Clark Peters from The Wire. He lived in England at the time. The supporting cast in this one is particularly strong, if unusual, for a movie like this. Peter Boyle, who's now mostly known for comedic roles, is the heavy. Boyle, of course, was actually known for dramas back then, having fam famously starred in the movie Joe. He never overplays the part, rather acting like a frustrated manager resigned to the realities of his job. He doesn't want to kill anyone, but he will if he has to, as long as he doesn't have to get his hands dirty, that is. But the film is all but stolen by Francis Sternhagen as the moon's alcoholic washed up doctor. Are you the new marshal? Yes. I got an alibi. I got four people who swear they were playing poker with me. I've never heard that one before. That's really funny. A role that was originally written for a man, but one she nails, having really good interplay with Sean Connery. They start at each other's throats, but you feel their mutual grudging respect build up throughout the film. In some ways, she's kind of like the Grace Kelly of this movie because she's the one that comes along and saves him at the end of the film, even though there's no romantic interest between them. It's also worth noting that the technical credits in this one are top-notch with really good special effects for the era, some pretty atmospheric lensing by Steven Goldblatt, who is a really good cinematographer, but the story behind this is that Goldblatt didn't actually really shoot a lot of the movie. Peter Himes himself kind of took it over because it carries his distinct look. This is something that Himes would do. They hired Goldblatt. Goldblatt was just kind of left to his own devices while Himes himself essentially took over. The movie also has a really good score by the late, great Jerry Goldsmith. Now, Outland 
actually is packed with a ton of action and it has a really cool show-stopping foot chase throughout the space station that culminates in a hand-to-hand -hand scrap between Conroy and one of Boyle's drug runners. Hyams really had a good knack for shooting chase sequences. There's also a really good one in the Presidio and this is pretty good stuff. Outland, of course, is available on Blu-ray and digitally on iTunes, Google Play, Max. But one warning, avoid the old DVD version of the movie that came out in the late 90s. It was one of the first DVDs to ever get released and it sports a horrible transfer. You're better off getting a VHS tape of the movie, honestly. So Outland is a forgotten gem in both Sean Connery and Peter Himes' respective filmographies, but it's a really nifty little sci-fi action flick and especially worth checking out if you're a fan of genre movies from the era. So, give it a look. Zero to 